All right, so now what we're going to do is come in here and lock this layer. And we're going to add another layer, uh, again, another watercolor layer. And I'm going to grab a brush called uh, Water Impressionist Wave. And this brush is from my real watercolor two brushes also. And I want to pick, I'm going to pick this really dark blue here that I was using before. Uh, again, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to start somewhere around in here and just kind of bring that brush in there and we'll bring it forward. Don't need to take it all the way out to the side. We'll just bring it kind of forward like that and let her run. And we'll go in and put in a little bit of, uh, I want a little bit of some of this other color. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit bluer. And um, let's see how this is going to work. We'll just put in a little bit here and here, a little bit there see how that works and I'm going to take just a little bit of this green and add a little bit of the green throughout just like that and that'll give us some some like some wave action back there just some little lines going here there and yon but let's let it finish and I'll show you what the next uh, step will be Okay, I think we're just about finished with our flow. Now I'm going to go to a different brush called Loaded Water. It's also in the Real Watercolor 2 selection. By the way, you can get all of these brushes from my website if you'd like. They're all free. And the uh, blog, rather, the blog is called Skip Allen Paints. If you just Google it, you'll find it. Uh, and like I said, all of these brushes I'm mentioning are available free. Now, I've got this loaded water brush, and I want to make it really tiny. Uh, so that's 2.8. I think I actually want to get it down to about 1. 0.5, yeah, about that. Okay, so now we come back here, and I'm going to hold my shift key down and lightly make a line or two across here. And that's just to give me a more indication of surf. Now this one's going to be, oops, <laughs> I'm holding the shift key down so I get those straight lines. I'm now pressing harder so that I get uh, an indication of more surf maybe coming down the pike. All right, so now that I've got that, I can make my brush bigger now. And we'll come in here and really try to just give an indication of surf here. like that. And we just want to break that up a little bit and break this up a little bit. Like that. Okay, so we've got the the sea coming down to surf. And I think I'm going to put this let's move this over to the side. I'm going to go up here and grab this kind of dark brown. And I'm going to get a brush called Square Wet Brush. This is from Splashing Water. And it's a real nice square brush that's wet feeling. And I just want to put in you know, the water that comes up from it is picking up some of the sand and stuff. And it has more of a kind of a green look to it. I 
I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it as well, just so it doesn't, it's not totally different from the water below. And I want to go back to that green color, and I'm going to fade it out a little bit. This would be, you know what, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to go to another brush, which is in my uh, Cool Springs, and it is called Fill 2. And I like Fill 2 because I can come in, we're going to use the same color, I can come in and put a very soft amount of color down. And then as I begin to come out, if I darken the color, I'm going to get one of those little pool lines that's so indicative of watercolor, like that. There we go, like that. So now I've got, this is like the water is coming out onto the, to the beach is the way I think about it. All right, so we're going to lock this layer. And we're going to add another watercolor layer. And this time I'm going to grab a brush called um, Wet Bristle. Uh, no, I'm going to try Grainy Edge. Not sure how that's going to work. But I'm going to try Grainy Edge and I'm going to go to Papers, um, to my paper libraries, and I'm going to grab a paper called... It's not down here, it's up this way. That's not it. Here it is. It's called Fuzzy Worms. <laughs> so this is Fuzzy Fuzzy Worms. I don't want it to be that big. I'm gonna bring it down to about oh let's see, about 127. That looks alright. Let's go a little bit less, about a hundred. Uh Go a little bit more. About 119. I'm going to leave this at 196 for sort of a nice uh, setup there. And um, let's see, I'm going to go to Grainy Edge, which is a real watercolor brush. And I want to look and see what we've got set. We've got current paper set, which is what we want. And I believe everything else is. Uh, set up okay. Current paper. I've just reset it to whatever its setting was. And now I'm going to go to uh, a color that is this kind of blue brown that's fairly dark. And I want to make the brush smaller. And I'm going to come out here and just put this out here and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's what I want. But I want to put on my pause diffusion so that I can come back in here and add some other color in here. Put a little of this blue, green, brown in there. You know, with my grain so high, I'm going to bring the grain down to 50%. That will allow me to get a little of this color in between here. Like that. And I'm going to switch to uh, thick and Thin 17, which is like a linear brush, and use a very dark color here. And I'm going to come across like that. Let's uh, take the grain down, because I'm getting a... I don't want to get the lines there. Okay. And we'll 
kind of put up a couple of trees like this. They look too big. So we just come up that way, that way. I don't want that line. Let's go back to the thick and thin. We'll use the wet bristle this time. That might look like a palm. Not much, <laughs> but kind of like a palm. <laughs> uh, let's see, what can I do to make that more palm-like? Well, actually, I could go to this Novelty One, which is really a palm tree brush, or actually a... a that looks a little bit better. Let's uh, let's give it a little more color. We'll give it a little of that green. I don't want to have too much color back here. I don't want to have too much color in the painting at all. I want it to be somewhat monochrome in the sort of uh, cool, uh, well actually they're a little bit warm blues, but uh, uh, similar to kind of a monocolor look. Okay, so we've got some distance created there. We've got our our little uh, sea coming in, in, the surf. Now what we need to do is get some sand down here. Now I'm going to go to a flow map that is also called... Uh, let's see. First, let's go back to our paper. We'll go back to our uh, rough arches paper and we'll go to the flow map and we'll come down and find I think I have a fuzzy worms down here somewhere fuzzy worms okay so we'll make our flow map fuzzy worms and let's look at how we have it set up uh, let's make this a little bit bigger and we'll drop this down some. That should give us what we want. Alright, now what am I going to use for the brush? I think I'm going to come in here and grab my uh, Very Wet 07. Now Very Wet 07 works with, this is also in Cool Springs, it works with uh, uh, color expression set for pressure, and that means that it's going to use the main and additional color. So uh, if I put the additional color at this light uh, orangey yellow, and then come up here and make the other color, this sort of dark blue-brown, let's go a little bluer, okay? That means that when I press lightly, I'm going to get a uh, light color, and as I press heavier with the uh, the 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 brush, I'm going to get a darker color and a mixture in between. Now let's go up here, and we're going to lock this layer, and we'll add another watercolor layer, and make sure that our concentration is still on. I didn't release my concentration back here because I didn't want that to run. I wanted to leave it kind of sharp. I'll soften it a little later. All right, so I'm going to come in and make my brush a little bit smaller first. And we'll come in and put in some of this color. 